Shalom. First off, we want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity and peace and salutations to the elect. As always, these internet epistles and us going out there on them highways and the byways is more so geared towards the Lord's people, which are the Israelites. Today, consisting of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father sea line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel that's written in my bio. But it's even more so geared towards the elect out of the nation of Israel, which is the small remnant that's going to actually repent and seek the Lord before all hell breaks loose. As far as in the heathen, tuning into these lessons and listening to us on the, you know, maybe out there on the highways and the byways, you're just going to learn about your judgment to come and what is going to be in the kingdom of heaven, ultimately to under, being under subjection to the Israelites. Through the Spirit, this lesson is on the fact of how the Lord loads us daily with benefits to get through this to get through this life. Basically, this temporal kingdom, which is about to be destroyed by way of World War Three, especially America, which is going to be a complete desolate desert land. Because it's going to be destroyed by the ICBM missiles that's going to be shot over here by the other countries in the midst of World War Three, And during that time, you know, the Lord is going to load the elect daily with benefits on their walk to salvation. And the ones that's here in America, when those missiles are shot, are going to basically be receive the benefit of being delivered from the destruction to come. While the majority of our people... Because like I said, the elect is the small remnant out of the nation of Israel are going to have to die leading up during that time and leading up to that time. The elect is going to be banged up in them chariots, what they call so-called UFOs, which we know those are to be the chariots of the angel, the, the chariots of the Lord. But like I said, the Lord loads us daily with benefits. That's why we're supposed to continuously pray like the scriptures say. And one of the main prayers we should know is the Lord's prayer. So I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 6 and I'm going to jump straight to the point. It says, verse 11, it said, give us this day our daily bread. And that daily bread, you know, only consists of our food that we're going to need to sustain us for the day. That includes, you know, what we need to get through the day in general from day to day. You know, whether having your bills paid, whether having the spiritual fortitude in order to, in order to overcome the demons that's on these people that's in the world that may try to get under your flesh, you know, get uh, trying to persuade you into sowing to the flesh and doing something carnal. That's why we got to continue to pray to remain in the spirit and pray that the Lord continue to load us daily with these benefits, which is the Holy Spirit to be able to, like I said, ignore certain trials and tribulations that's, tri that's going to come our way. Cause like we understand that doing this walk, is not going to be easy. Like how I said, we got to take up our cross and follow him. Of course, our burden is not as heavy as his was, but we all got to we all have our measure and the Lord knows how much a certain person can bear. Everyone might not be able to bear the same amount of pressure, but the Lord has each individual set for what they're going to have to handle. And you got to pray to the Lord and ask him to continuously load you with them daily benefits. We got to do the work ultimately, ultimately. But I'm going to jump down to. Verse 33, it says, and these are in red letters, so it's our Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. It said, but seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. And that's what we're supposed to be seeking. Because we understand, once you come into this truth, that this is not our rest. 
of course, we got to use the world, but not abuse it. But we can't be have our mindset stuck on continuing on in this kingdom because our kingdom is not established yet. But through the spirit, we can feel that it's close for our Lord to return based on the prophecies and how the world is going. Because the Lord can't allow these devils that's destroying the earth to continue to be in power. Because like it says, if the Lord didn't shorten the days in Matthew 24 and 22, there will be no flesh to be saved. But for the elect's sake, he shortened the days. That's why time feels as though it's speeding up. Of course, we, the hope for the elect, we, we, we wish that the Lord would come like yesterday. But we got to have the patience, which patience means to suffer. And that's one of the major things you're going to need in this walk. Because Yahweh Shai is on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father waiting to get his re revenge just as well as we are. And, and, and of course, none of us wanted more than him. Verse 34 said, Take therefore no thought for the, the for the morrow, basically for tomorrow. Like I said, the Lord loads us daily with the benefits. For tomorrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil there. Because like I said in one of my last lessons that we, we, we don't know what the what evils the Lord has defended us from. Because we understand this is a spiritual battle. Like I say, of course we in the flesh, so we might get irritated, but like I spoke, like I said in my last lesson, you might have forgot your keys in the house or or locked your key in the in the, in the house or something and it slowed you down from going to a specific place that you planned on going. At a certain time, but like the scriptures say, Proverbs 20 and 24, man's going to the Lord. And if the Lord is dealing with dealing with you, of course, like I said, you might get irritated or it could be a temptation of, from Satan. But you got to understand that the Lord, our Lord, Yahweh Shah, prayed that the Father not take us from out of the world, but to keep us from the evil. So you, the Lord, the Satan can only do what the Lord allows him to do. So you don't know what the Lord was protecting you from when that situation happened to you. But like I said, of course, we're in the flesh, so we might get a little agitated. But like the scriptures say, Ephesians 4 and 26, be ye angry and sin not. Verse 27, I believe, roughly paraphrasing, don't give place for the devil. But I'm going to go to the to the scripture that ultimately inspired this lesson, you know, because we meditate on the scriptures as much as possible. It says, Psalm 68 and verse 19, it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth, up, loadeth us with benefits, even the power of our salvation. Selah. And that's one of the greatest things that we can receive, that we're going to be able to have salvation through our Lord Yahweh Shai. So we understand that this is not the end all be all. Of course, we feel the pressure of how this world is being ran, the wickedness that they push on a daily basis, and how, how it's waxing worse and worse. But knowing that we have the power, the the power of our salvation that's going to deliver us. That gives us the comfort. And that's what we receive, the comfort, which that's the Holy Spirit. Holy means separate. It's only one. And only the small remnant is the ones that's going to receive that Holy Spirit. The people that have been, the Christian churches, you know, Roman Catholic churches, Islam, etc. Jesus Christ is not going to give you the comfort. The comfort is given to us by Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. And these scriptures are comforting to us. But for the people that can't receive it, a lot, a lot of these scriptures are going to offend them. Because the Lord isn't dealing with them. And that's one of the conditions of the battle that we must understand, especially us in this walk. Like I always say, some of the people that we care about may not receive this knowledge. That's one of the bitter parts of this truth. But ultimately, it's because they didn't care about the Lord. They didn't care to be obedient to the Lord. So ultimately, the Lord rejected them. Because no one loves Israel more than the Lord. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, basically what I was speaking on earlier, it said, they have no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But the most high is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So yeah, you got to understand that the temptations that you go through, the Lord knows if you can get through it or not. And the Lord isn't going to put you, put something on, it, on you that you can't bear. So like I said, we got to bear our cross. And that's why we're learning what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord so that we can look for the way out of that temptation because the Lord, like, like the scriptures say, it's going to give you a way out of that temptation. It's up to you whether you're going to take it or not, whether you're going to use obedience or not. Because the flesh wants you to go the wrong direction. The flesh wants you to lean onto your own understanding. The flesh wants you to believe on what you can see. When we understand that this thing is based on faith, And faith is a gift that only the elect is going to have. Especially during this time of grace. And that's another thing that the Lord gave us. Grace. To be able to turn back. But the wicked of our people are not going to take advantage of that grace and do what they need to do. They're not going to put in the work. Like we always bring about just like the time of Noah. Noah had faith and ultimately feared the Lord and he could and he started to do the work, basically what was needed to do to be saved. Him and his, you know, his family to be saved. And that's what we that's what we doing. The, the hopeful elect, the ones that's fighting that good fight of faith. Ephesians 2 and 8, it said, For grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because if we understand we can't be saved by our works, because it's written by the, from the foundation of the earth, but part of this thing of ours, we're supposed to be using our faith and works. And having and a person using a faith, the faith called the faith that believe in these scriptures cause you to have the fear to do the work because, like the scriptures say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Because yeah, we don't know if we're part of the elect, but and we understand that we can't be saved by our works, but the fear is gonna move you to to at least try. Because ultimately the Lord didn't have to wake us up to this truth. Because the Lord didn't wake everybody up to this truth. A lot of our people are still in darkness because they don't want to receive the light, which that light is Yahweh Shem Yahusha. Matthew 13 and verse 10. I'm going to start at verse 10 because this, like I said, this is a this is a benefit that we been loaded daily with them. We're able to learn more and more daily. We get, we, we're able to get fed daily. The Lord has set up pastures according to his heart, like the scriptures say, to feed us daily. And us men that the Lord put the spirit on to, to do the work, to enter into the labors. We have a heavy task, you know, to feed the sheep, like the Lord said. The Lord said, if you love him, feed his sheep. That's part of doing the work because we had a fear. And ultimately, that's the least we could do to show our appreciation for the benefits that the Lord gave us to, to, to receiving this knowledge. Like the scriptures say, freely give, freely, freely receive, freely give. We, we didn't have to pay for this. You can't buy this knowledge. You can't go to a college 
and get a degree for this knowledge. As we can see, it's, it's a lot of these so-called Christians, which we call them antichrist, that have been in these Bibles for, for 30 plus years, etc., but still don't understand the scriptures. That's why it says in Revelation 1 and 3, one, the first chapter and the third verse, blessed is he that readeth. They don't understand. They don't go into the words. They don't They don't truly understand. When you go into that word read, if it's basically talking about to understand, you can read this book from front to back 300 times. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the gift, the benefits that the Lord give you are the Holy Spirit, you're not going to get it. And we can tell our people what's to come, et cetera, the prophecies to our face turn blue. But if the Lord doesn't want them to receive it, they're not going to receive it because the Lord may have may want them to be destroyed. But I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. It says, and the, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Because, you know, the Lord didn't speak straight up to all of the Israelites during that time because he didn't want everybody to receive it. It says, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So, yeah, it was only given to a certain amount of people, and that's the elect. I'm going to jump on down to verse 13. It said, Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hear and they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Because that's one of the things some people don't understand. They sit there and say they only deal with the Old Testament or they only deal with the New Testament. When the Lord clearly stated that he comes in the volume of the book, it was written of him. So he's reiterating what was written in the scriptures. Like he said, he come not to destroy the law of the prophets. He come to fulfill. He came to do the will of the Father. Just like we got to do the will of the Father. We got to do our part. He did his part. We got to do our part. It says, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and sh shall not understand, and seeing ye should see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed us at any time. They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I shall heal them. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. So yeah, that's we we're, we're blessed to be able to to understand these scriptures. And like I said, that's the gift. That's us being loaded daily with benefits, and we gotta continuously pray that the Lord keep the the Holy Spirit on us because as we seen, like I said, my short time in the truth that some people they've endured for a while, and eventually that spirit is taken been taken away from them. The benefits have been have ran out for them. And we want to keep these benefits flowing in all the way to the end. Like the scriptures say, he that endured to the end, the same should be saved. We want to be saved. We don't want to be <laughs> die a grievous death because understanding, coming into this truth and receiving this knowledge. You already got a heavy burden on you because if you go back into the world, back into the pollutions, it's like a slap in the face of the Lord to the Lord. And that's not, that's the last thing we want to do. That's the last thing you should want to do. The Lord has gave us this truth. And this truth ultimately is what set us free. Because we're allowed to, you know, put, cast our burdens on the Lord. And understand that everything is in his hands. That's one of the beautiful things about this thing. Like I said, if you had that faith, you trust in the Lord. So you 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 have nothing to 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 worry about because, like I said, you you understand that that whatever's in the will is going to happen, regardless of what a person do, what a person say. Without, no matter what man do. That's like got our people, a lot of our people talking about who they want to vote for 
fathers and being the so-called president. Basically trusting in trusting in oppre oppression, trusting in the shadow of Egypt, America being spiritually Egypt, thinking that their vote is going to matter when ultimately it doesn't matter who's in office. It's based on only the, the what's going to happen is what's going to happen according to the prophecies and the scriptures. And that's with that faith. That's what we believe. And that's what we stand by. We don't give a damn who's in office. We understand that regardless, like I said, how, whatever the Lord says is going to happen, is going to happen. Like he says in Isaiah 55 and 11, his words don't go out void. It's going to accomplish ultimately what he please. Because we understand that everything is going to boil down to the plan of these devils making a mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip mandatory. Everything's going to go digital. And that's their plan. They could do all this chit chat, imagine vain day things, all this fighting, rioting, whatever they want to do. It's all going to boil down to, to that, to that main, to that, basically that hour temptation, which is going to try the world. And only ones that's going to be loaded with that benefit of having the spirit on them to tell these devils. When I say devil, I'm talking about the so-called white man forefather is Esau Edom. Devil meaning deceiver. The ones that had a faith, that had a Holy Spirit on them, is going to be the ones that tell these devils that they're not taking it. Even if it requires death. Because we understand that through faith, that the ones that die in the faith are going to be raised up first, you know, in the kingdom. And catch up with the ones, you know, that might that may have not had to see death that was delivered. The ones that, that continued in the faith that didn't have to see death. While the majority of our people are going to be lost. Some of them that, that received this truth basically and bucked up against it, died death by pain. They're going to have to wake up in the kingdom with their head down basically in everlasting shame and contempt because they didn't receive the knowledge that the Lord has stretched forth daily to benefit them. But like I said, it benefits us, the the hopeful elect, the ones that's that's appreciating it. I'm going to finish off with Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And like I always say, it's talking about the wisdom and knowledge of these scriptures, the understanding of the scriptures. That's going to keep us stable during, the time, during, during our times in this wicked and polluted kingdom and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And we understand the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. But like I said, the point of this lesson is that the Lord load us, load us daily with the benefits of what we need to get through the day. Lord willing, that was edifying. Shalom.